Welcome to Design Domination, where you'll learn to become a better, more business-savvy designer so you can dominate your competition. Hi, and thanks for tuning in. I'm Colleen Grotzer, and in this episode of Design Domination, I'm talking about what your reply to a prospect says about you. Do you respond to prospects right away? Do you send them a price or your hourly rate when they first reach out to you? Do you lack confidence when dealing with prospects? If you answered yes to any of these questions, please stick around to find out how these behaviors negatively affect how prospects perceive the value of your work. I see the issue of pricing being discussed by designers all the time. And recently, one designer said they had lost a job because their pricing was too high It was actually way too low. Another designer said that they had given some pricing to a prospect and was then told another designer could do it in fewer hours. But guess what? These are not issues with pricing. These are much more deeply rooted than that. These are positioning issues. And that means that's how you're being perceived. And part of your positioning involves how you respond to a prospect. It actually pains me to see designers in these scenarios because I know what it's like and I know how frustrating it is. I mean, I too had these same behaviors earlier in my career. I totally get it. But I also know how great it feels to not be in that position and to be in demand and command higher rates and get better clients who see you as a trusted expert. And none of that has to do with having low pricing. So let's change that for you today. I'm going to get into how most designers typically respond to prospects and how their responses come across to them. As is typical of prospects looking to have work done, the first question is usually, how much is it going to cost? Some prospects might even send over print specs for a brochure or whatever the case might be the size of it, the expected page count, and so forth. This is what you need to send to a printer to get print bids, but that's the end of the process, after the design is done. If the design hasn't been created yet, why are they providing this information this early on? I mean, after all, aren't you supposed to be the designer providing input on this project? Maybe you even have a better idea for the format it should take, or the size. And like maybe a postcard would work better for them than a brochure, for example. But hey, they've got everything all figured out. They don't need an expert. They just need someone to execute the work. They just need an order taker. That is, unless you change the conversation. Now that's fine if you want to be the order taker, but then price will usually be the deciding factor between you and someone else. If you're sick of competing on price, just keep on listening because no one is coming to you for design work. They do not care about the design. They are coming to you for a result. And that is what that design will do for them. And if the conversation always revolves around pricing and deliverables, like a logo design, a brochure, a website, then they will always compare your pricing to every other designer out there who's giving them an estimate on these same deliverables. What many designers do next is they get so excited at the opportunity of working with a new client that they just reply with a price. They just answer the question. They don't get any information about the details of the job, the deadline, the goals of the project, the needs of the client, and so forth. Just a price, like it's a fast food chain and everything costs the same to everyone. This only reinforces price shopping. This pits you against designers who lowball their pricing. It's a race to the bottom. Someone will always be cheaper. You won't get the work, and then whoever does is doing it too cheap. What you should do instead is take control of the sales process. And that starts with screening the prospect to see if they're a good fit, 
if the prospect demonstrates respect for your process by abiding by it, and if the work is something you're even interested in and have time for and can do well. This is also to say, hey, I'm not an order taker, and to see if the prospect is serious or just price shopping. It also says, I'm not sitting around waiting for clients to bestow work upon me. For some reason, a lot of prospects seem to think that freelancers are broke and always looking for their next project. And so when something comes along, you should be grateful. And so grateful that you'll do it for less than you should be. Now, a lot of prospects will ask you for your hourly rate. And I've never understood this. I mean, what good is an hourly rate if you don't know or they don't know how long it will take? Otherwise, they're writing a blank check. What good is it to them to compare hourly rates when, say, designer A, who charges $100 per hour, could take four hours to do something, okay, so $400, and designer B charges $30 per hour but takes 20 hours to do something, which would be $600. The more experienced designer can do it for less and in less time. But wait, should that be less valuable to the client? They're even going to get it done sooner. On the other hand, should the client pay more to designer B just because they're slower? Still, many designers will respond with an hourly rate, and some might give a number of hours, and some might not. The first problem, though, with giving out an hourly rate at all is that it says you want to be paid only for your time. And you may not be taking into consideration any expenses, taxes to be paid, insurance, rent or mortgage, electric and water, and so forth. In other words, you're going to actually keep a lot less than what you're charging per hour. You have to first know if you're even profitable at that rate. And if you're comparing your hourly rate to what you were paid at a job, you're not comparing apples to apples. You have a lot more expenses when freelancing, whether that's full or part-time, and you're not working eight billable hours five days a week. If you're not sure what you're charging is even profitable, I highly recommend downloading marketing mentor Elise Benin's overhead and hourly rate worksheet, which is in the show notes on the episode page at creative-boost.com. Hourly rates also don't compensate you for your expertise. I mean, you've probably invested a lot of time over a long period of years, right? Honing your skills to be as good and fast as you are today. Why should you penalize yourself for that? Except in very rare situations, experts just don't charge hourly. And then what you should charge is going to depend on the size of the client geographic location, your expertise, the quality of your work, and any particular niche or specialty that you have. Think about this. What if you redesign a logo for a product and the client sales double? Wasn't that worth more than $150 to them? Don't you deserve more for having the expertise to have helped them do that? Many designers will also reply right away or outside of set business hours. Some designers might even respond late at night. Now, I realize some of you may be working full-time and then freelancing on the side, so it's hard to respond during typical business hours. That's fine, I get it. But if you have a habit of replying whenever, this can make it seem like you have nothing else going on. You can think of it like dating. When you're too available, it can make you less attractive or even seem desperate. If you don't have set business hours, please consider them. You can work whenever you want, but setting hours also sets expectations for when clients should expect to hear from you. Because when you don't set these expectations, you'll start getting emails at all hours and on the weekends, and I speak from experience, it is a very hard behavior to untrain. Oftentimes, when designers provide a price, 
and again, I did this myself in the early days of freelancing, they end what should be a statement with a question mark, like if it's an email, or with an intonation of a question if they are talking to the prospect. So it's like the price is presented like it's a question. Or maybe you're guilty of asking if the price is quote unquote doable. Either way, this comes across as my price is up for negotiation. Hey folks, this is not eBay. You're not in search of the highest bidder. You're in charge of setting your price. When you're in the mentality of I've got to charge something they're willing to accept, you're missing the point completely. Who is running your business? Clients or you? Plus, if your pricing is up for negotiation, it comes across as unprofessional. Most designers hate sales because they feel sleazy. I get it, but what actually can come across as sleazy is negotiating your pricing to the whim of the prospect. Okay, if you're always willing to adjust the price, it actually puts your credibility in question. That's because it makes it seem as if your initial price was inflated, like you just made it up, had no basis for it, like you're just trying to get as much money as you can out of them. Some prospects will come to you with a sob story, asking if you can do it for less, or worse, for free. Trust me, I've heard it all before. I already paid three other designers who didn't do the work well, so the money I had for this has already been spent. We're a startup and can't afford to pay much right now, or we can pay you in stock. We can't pay you for this work, but we can provide tons of exposure. Give us a discount now because we will have a lot more work for you in the future. These are their issues, not yours. And I have learned if you are always willing to take on other people's problems, you are creating problems for yourself. Trust me, I know. You will miss out on better projects with better clients. Now, shockingly, some designers will even lower the pricing on their own without the prospects prompting or presenting a sob story, thinking it will help them get the work. Again, I've done that too at some point. So many designers think clients are looking for cheap. Good clients want quality work and they are willing to pay for it. When you price too low, it scares away the good clients. I know this all too well from experience too. In my early days of freelancing, I lost a lot of work that I was well qualified for because my pricing was too low. It did not matter that it was because it was just me at the time in my business and the estimates they got from others were from larger agencies. Okay, so then what do you do if you shouldn't respond right away or with an hourly rate or with a price? Well, you want to qualify the prospect with a process. Just because they ask for a price does not mean you just give an answer. How can you possibly even give a price without knowing more? Some designers will ask for a call to discuss the details of the project. That's great. But sometimes what happens is the prospect pushes back. They've determined they don't need a call. They just need a price. Unfortunately, what most designers will then do is to just give in and provide a price and then their process goes out the window. And this leaves them susceptible to taking on a bad client and charging too little. And that's because there was no chance to demonstrate value, which is a crucial step in the sales process. The prospect was allowed to dictate the process. The prospect based their decision on price not value. If someone reaches out to me about a price, I don't give one. I screen them first. If they respect my process and seem like they might be a good fit, only then do I set up a call. And then I ask them a few questions about their project and what they're trying to accomplish. And if you're not sure which questions to ask, check out my 17 questions guide. Just go to creative-boost.com slash questions and you'll get that guide and some helpful emails. And then after that call, only then will I provide an estimate because now I have an understanding of their needs. Otherwise, 
the conversation is going to end up being about price. Let's get something straight, okay? The goal is not to win every job and every client. The goal is to be profitable. Because if you aren't profitable, why are you taking on the work? If it's going to cost you more than you're being paid, why do it? And never mind the frustration from having to deal with bad clients. Cheap clients always end up costing you more. They will suck the life out of you, which is time that you should be spending on clients who pay better and value your work. The root of these issues is not pricing. The issue is positioning. And the other issue is your confidence. Prospects will treat you the way you allow yourself to be treated. If you want to be treated like an expert and charge like an expert, you have to act like it. That was really hard for me, but that was a game changer for my business. Let's change this for you today. And I've got something to help you do just that. Like I mentioned, my 17 questions guide, that will give you some of the questions to ask. But my brand identity builder will guide you through a process from start to finish. The first part of that is consultation, which is going to give you the questions to ask in the beginning of the process, which will position you as an expert and help you screen potential clients so you don't waste time on those who are a bad fit, the tire kickers. And then there's the proposal section, what to include in a proposal and why so that you are seen as an expert and stand out from other designers. And then the third part is discovery, what information you want to gather from the client so that you have an objective point of reference throughout the process and a smoother relationship as a result. Then there's research, what you need to think about before you even start designing so that you create a more successful design. And then the design phase is what to consider as you're creating the design so that you ensure that it works for the client and you enhance your expertise. And then the presentation section is ways to present your work and address feedback so that you impress the client and get less pushback. And who doesn't want less pushback? (laughs) And then the delivery section is how to properly finalize. If you're creating a logo, it's how to properly finalize the logo and create the proper deliverables so you can actually enhance the value of that kind of work. And then the final section is how to showcase your work online in a professional and impressive way so you can start attracting better clients. A couple of these sections are focused on brand identity, but even if you're not designing a brand identity, these questions, this process will still help you get your power back in the client designer relationship. This process puts you, not the client, in charge so that you will be perceived as the trusted expert. And when you have a process in place, you will have more confidence and you'll be less susceptible to taking on bad clients. Confidence is key to being seen as an expert. Clients want to know that you will be able to deliver what they're expecting. They need an expert to lead them. You can be their next design hero to do just that. And that's what I want for you. I really hope that this episode has been helpful. And check out the show notes on the episode page because I've got a lot of links there to several other podcast episodes that will help you. And if you implement any of these strategies, I would love to hear from you how they've worked for you. You can always reach me via email at colleen at creative-boost.com or in the Design Domination Facebook group, or leave a comment on the episode page. Do you want to get more respect and command higher rates? I can help you go from order taker to expert through mentoring, my free guides, and premium resources, such as my brand style guide builder, brand identity builder, and my website accessibility course. You can find out more at creative-boost.com. You can also join me and other creatives in the Design Domination Facebook group.